Hello everybody and welcome back. It's Terry. And this is another edition of An Orc of the Day. Now I know I gave a teaser on my community page here on YouTube, but that was really, I gave it away. But I did get uh, some new things today. Uh, briefly just go over these two. This is a Leptos, uh, I'm sorry, it's a Galliandra Leptoceras species. You can see it's in spike. And that behind here, this is Dendrobium uh, cumulatum. No, not cumulatum, it's cruminatum. Both of these are replacements. I've re I bloomed both of them, had them before. Both of them were really nice plants for me, so I'm very happy to have uh, blooming sized plants. But this is what I put on my community page. And this is a Maxillaria. Very nice colored Variabilis is the species. This uh, is tagged a special clone. I think it's tagged just black flower. I believe that's what it says, black or black something. But it's beautiful nonetheless. And also there's another bud that's peeking out right there. So you can see fairly typical maxillaria growth pattern, sort of the stair step that I sort of call it. Um, and it will form the newest new pseudobulbs and as it matures the, the previous year's pseudobulbs will put up a bud and just look at that color nice sized plant obviously two uh, potential blooms that will be there at the same time I'm not sure what's going on on the other side of the plant haven't taken the plant out of the uh, here's actually the name it's black flower yeah that's what it is but it looks like it's primarily rock and small rock and a little bit of bark. Maybe a few pieces of charcoal in there. So I will try to do my best to, uh, you know, keep it healthy. Maxillarius, also called the variable maxillaria species was described by James Bateman, also uh, Lin Lee, I guess they were together in 1837. This species is native to Central America, from Mexico down through Panama. They grow on trees or rocks. Um, also, they grow on top of the ground. Um, really, they have a wide variety of habitats that they grow. In Mexico, they grow their on oak trees, um, in open forests that get a lot of light, also in dense forests that get more diffused light, um, grown from pretty much sea level in Mexico up into moderate altitudes. So it can take a wide range of temperatures. Also in other areas um, in Guatemala, they are found in semi-mountainous areas as in south and as in el salvador nicaragua um, this plant likes even watering all year um, the, likes to be moist but doesn't like to be damp damp and soggy um, and in the winter time they like a little bit less but they still like um, moisture just a little bit less um, it does bloom throughout the year um not really one time specifically and they get the name variable just because the flowers of this species are very um variable um, they can bloom white yellow sometimes dark orange um, greenish yellow and even darker than that as far as uh, the color is concerned like this color dark red or reddish brown and that's where it gets its name from, Variable. Um, as far as light, it likes moderate bright light, but it should be uh, 
uh, it should have some shade. Um, so this is probably not a good spot for it because of the afternoon just is blaring right here, the sun. As far as temperatures, it does appreciate warm to intermediate temperatures, more on the intermediate side. It probably blooms better when it's uh, in intermediate temperatures. Um, the humidity has to be about 75, 70 to 75% year round. Can tolerate a little bit less in the wintertime at the beginning of spring, which is when they're generally uh, beginning to set their buds for bloom. Although they can bloom any time of the year, as I said. Uh, Maxillaria variabilis can bloom, a bit, um, not bloom, but it can um, be grown in various ways. It can be grown potted, it can be grown mounted, as long as the humidity um, as long as you can maintain that humidity and provide the water and moisture that it needs in, in warm months. Um, it is very susceptible to rotting uh, media. So if you put it in sphagnum of any kind, you really need to pay attention to that because it will suffer greatly if it is kept in sphagnum too long. Um, and that's probably about it for this plant. Not sure about the fragrance. I believe there is a fragrance to some of these variables, but there again, I believe uh, th that too is a variable that is very variable between different types of uh, variables. And like I said, they do like less water in the winter, but they do not want to be dry completely for too long. But. So it should be easy for most people. I've always struggled with these maxillarias. For some reason, I probably overwater them too much. Um, but anyhow, I will definitely have to give this one a little bit of special care. And again, folks, thanks for watching. And enjoy your orchids. Bye.